One of my collaborators sent me this video the other day. It's a typical drive to work for him in the remoteness of South Africa. And that's why I would never recommend anyone to become a radio astronomer. But it begs the question, in the not so far off future, the next lot of humans, I say humans rather than US astronauts because who knows, maybe the Chinese Taikonauts will beat them to it. But um, those humans, they'll be landing on the moon. And then we want to inhabit it permanently and then explore every little inch. All I can think about is those poor lunar rovers that will get completely destroyed. We need roads on the moon and even Mars, and these scientists have taken the first steps to making that happen. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, we're talking about building lunar highways. So let's begin. Lunar regolith. The race back to the moon has already begun, with many countries and even private companies in it for the win. The Apollo program ended in 1972, but by 2025, so just around the corner, NASA hopes to get the first woman and the next man back onto lunar soil. But this time, they'll be working to develop a sustainable presence on the moon, i.e. a lunar base. But for exploration, you need mobility, and outside of the Earth, both on the Moon and even Mars, the conditions aren't in our favour. While fine particles on Earth typically become smooth over time due to years of erosion from wind and water, lunar dust contrasts starkly, maintaining a sharp, spiky texture. I mean, have you even seen the state of Neil Armstrong's space boots? They were completely sanded down by the abrasive lunar regolith. Same goes for the lunar and Martian rovers. Scientists literally had to redesign the wheels to be airless and durable to withstand the harsh terrain of the lunar surface. It's also extremely dusty on the moon, some small disturbances, and you'll get a huge amount of lunar dust all over the place. Notably, this dust is often referred to as being like a sandblast and capable of damaging spacecraft. It's clear that if we want to stay on the moon, then we need the infrastructure. But the regolith, the lunar regolith, is against us. The moon's gravity is just a sixth of that on Earth, which means that even if we could transport a digger to the moon, it would have trouble digging. You'd also need millions and millions of tons of tarmac to take to space. And then you add to the mix that temperatures can vary from between minus 173 degrees Celsius during the lunar night to 127 degrees Celsius in the day. And then also account for the exposure to high levels of radiation because you don't get this protection of a magnetic field like you do here on Earth. As you can imagine, it's incredibly difficult to prevent cracks and other damage due to roads expanding and contracting in such extreme temperatures. Assuming that the radiation hasn't already affected the probabilities and the processes in making a road work. In this study, which I'll link down below, scientists have devised a plan to sinter or melt a lunar regolith by intensive solar radiation into dense, rigid structures. You could do this by focusing the light from the sun with mirrors and lenses. And we've seen such a thing with the walkie-talkie skyscraper in London, which literally melts cars on the street with its solar death ray. One big problem though that you'll face is how do we keep the structure? When you're melting dust particles, you're literally turning it into liquid. I mean, you could use molds, but where would you get such molds? Instead, you'd have to do tiny bits at a time. In any case, back to this study, they didn't have a solar death ray, so instead they used a high-powered laser to melt simulant lunar regolith, i.e. not the real thing. They found that in 2,400 seconds, they could melt to a depth of 25 millimeters. But for 1,200 seconds, so half of that time, you could melt to a maximum depth of 20 millimeters. So longer times with the laser doesn't necessarily mean a linear scale with depth of melting. 
Also, increasing the power of the laser didn't make too much of a difference either. When they attempted to make a road with the laser, i.e. melt two tracks next to each other with some overlap, the first solidified track would crack before the second track even finished melting. They put this down to be caused by an induced thermal shock, i.e. it's so cold on the moon that the first track has rapidly cooled and then it gets the shock of the heat from the second track. You've probably experienced the same thing when you've dropped a hot glass dish into a sink of cold water. It's never good. So to get around this, they explore different geometries of melting the regolith and they end up with something like this. They're about 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters in size with interlocking capabilities so they can cover large areas of lunar soil serving as roads or even landing pads for rockets. So my thoughts on this study was that it's pretty cool. They've developed a sustainable technique that could significantly mitigate the issues caused by suspended lunar dust, especially during rover movements. It's the very first steps to lunar infrastructure and it's vital for establishing a lunar base and ensuring the success of long-term missions. But I'm still not so convinced that they could do this in practice. Accurately pointing a focused sun is completely different and they're using simulated regolith which might not be like the real moon at all. If in the end they have to transport a massive laser up there, then that wipes out all of the sustainability points. And um, where are they going to generate that much power in the first place? Anyway, do you guys have any better ideas on how we could build a road on the moon or just get rid of this whole dust problem? Let me know in the comments section below how you would do it. That's all for this week's video. As always, thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting. Please consider joining if you haven't already. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.